Hey everyone, it's Daphne. We're going to get started on the cover, the inside liners of uh, Yuletide. So I have um, used this double uh, mat uh, on some features inside the book, um, and I'm really liking it, so I am going to feature it on the cover. So I'm going to start by um, building up this double mat, and then, then I'm going to add uh, my designer paper. And I'll let you know what I'm doing here. These, This is 8 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths. The cream is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. You're gonna to need to do that two times, one for the front and one for the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started by putting these together, both of these elements together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the spine. I'll give you those measurements when I get there. <clears throat> There's one. Here's our second one. Okay. Looks good. Okay, and so for the spine, we're going to have the brown cardstock is going to be two and three eighths, two and three eighths by eight and three eighths, two and three eighths by eight and three eighths. And then we're going to do two, two and a quarter by eight and a quarter for the cream. So basically it's an eighth inch shorter and narrower than the spine itself and and then the cream is yet another eighth inch smaller than the brown cardstock so it's a sixteenth inch border um, for all of these elements. Okay the next thing I'm going to do is just add it to our cover and back and I already like the look of that. <clears throat> I think I told you before, but I'll go over it again. This is Candy Bar. Basil is the brand of the paper, and it just happened to be something I had in um, my stash. <clears throat> um, I didn't do interactive elements with the brown, so there's no um, scoring required. They're just matte, and this was actually a test um, case. I was trying to find a nice dark brown to make my base albums out of, and in this case, the basil's too thick, it cracks if you score it, but it's beautiful for matting, as you can see. Okay, now we'll do the back. <clears throat> You can see there's a slight warping on the cream because of the glue, but I'm gonna cover it with designer paper so you're not gonna see it. The cream paper is pretty thin. It says it's 65, but it, it feels even a little bit lighter than that. But I'm gonna cover it so it doesn't really matter. I'd be more concerned about it if it wasn't gonna get covered with some designer paper. Okay, and what you see here is my book binding tape, which I find to be essential if you want your book to last or if you cover your book in fabric, um, something other than just the paper. The spine is required to hold a lot of weight, so it's it's kind of the, if you had to look at your book and pick a failure point, it's the spine and the hinge. So I do everything I can to make sure the hinge is secure to the front and back panel. I do that with the tape. <clears throat> and then to reinforce the spine itself to the front and back cover. So that process kind of 
takes care of two birds with one stone. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to burnish this real good. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to put the designer paper on the cover. And then we're going to go to the inside liner. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to make sure all my corners are down nice and secure. Okay, I'm back. This is what I've chosen for the cover. And it's kind of off to the side. I'm going to explain why that is. In the 12 by 12 um, pack, this image is in the upper uh, left-hand corner, and I really wanted it centered. So what I did is I trimmed this down at six and a half. So I put it in my trimmer. This is six and a half. This was the left edge of the 12 by 12, and it came out here. So I trimmed it down so I could move the image over to the right and have it not be tucked up in the corner here. So I'm going to put another accent piece here, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down as is. Make sure I've got it all inked. Oh, and I wanted to share, you may or may not be able to see it in this light. Let me tip it a few times and see. The, all of the, yeah, you can see it, all the berries I added um, a high gloss glue to. It's called Diamond Glaze. Um, but I think there's a, another product called Glossy Accents. It works essentially the same way. And anyways, I wanted the berries to kind of pop out, and they do. Um, probably add a bow or some other embellishments, but right now we're just going to get the flat elements in. And I, I really like this for the cover because it's just so warm. And nostalgic I love it um, the other one that I was considering I'll show it to you in a second I really liked it too but it just felt like it didn't go with what was inside the book it was just too different so I I didn't feel like I had the good flow um, of the pattern so I'm just gonna nudge that into there we go so we've got, uh, let's see, we've got basically an inch, an inch and a half that we need to cover here. So I'll be looking for something that will coordinate well with that. So the other image that I had really considered was this one, because I really thought this was beautiful. But these colors um, just, as you can see, it's just so different um, than the other colors in the collection. So it just felt like it was too stand out. Now what I may do is fussy cut around this to take out some of this light colors and then use this as just a feature on the back cover. Haven't decided yet, but that's one of the um, places where I'm kind of headed. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to line up the rest of the papers and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I've picked out my patterns. So um, I found this uh, strip. It's from a 12 by 12, and it was just a scrap, but it's pulling in this nice gray again. So I just trimmed this out to fit, and so I would have a nice border around it as well. Shoot. <clears throat> okay there we go this is what I've chosen for the spine and it was a scrap from this as well from the 12 by 12 Shoot. I got blue on something I wasn't paying attention Actually, that doesn't look right. I'm going to turn it upside down. I actually marked it instead of cutting it straight, I marked it on 
the top and bottom and it may have gone in the other way. It may fit better this way. Yep, it does. So that's what we'll do. I think that gives me a better border, a more consistent border. A little excess glue here. I'll come back and get that. And I need to trim this down just a bit. get this down this is the back side which is it was a trade-off between this and this for the cover but like I said I didn't feel like it flowed with what was inside the book even though I love the image and it was uh, perfectly placed to be in the lower right hand corner of the cover <clears throat> you guys are gonna love this collection and love the paper it's wonderful It just I can't I can't do it. <laughs> it won't flow from front to back. And that's a nice, simple, clean background. See, even this um, with the white looks better than than the, um, the flip side of this, I think. I mean, it just goes a little bit better. So, I don't know. I don't know. I also love this. This is um, a beautiful cut apart, so I think I might place that here. <clears throat> The other thing I could do is use these magnolias to pull back in the front, which I like that idea too. I would say this is the orientation. And then I've got a couple more. They're not really magnolias, but they're white flowers. Let's see what else we have stashed. There's a magnolia here as well. So I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. Um, probably what I would do here is um, cut a round picture and just put two pictures in there to cover up this this super white white. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is uh, use my ink pad and I'm going to run it over the white just to light, just to um, take some of the brightness off. And I'm going to do one at a time, one, uh, and so you can see the difference. And I'm going very, very, very lightly. So you can see it's now not quite as bright. And I think it works better. The other is you could fussy cut out the center, which I had done on um, some other elements to get some of that bright, bright white out. Now it's not quite so bright, looks a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this flat um, so it, the back will lay flat when you're looking at the album. Typically I don't do any dimension on the back or if I do it's very, very little. anything else I want to add to that. Got a couple of those are too big, not the right scale. OK, 
kind of like the season's greetings. What do you guys think? I like it over here. So I am going to do the same thing and just dab a little bit of um, ink on it to take away some of the super bright white. I'm using mahogany, but it's it's a relatively dry sponge, and it's better to tap instead of brush because you don't want to get lines through it. Okay. I like it. It looks pretty level, so I'm going to go with it. I'm going to do a little housekeeping because this looks like chaos, because it is. And then uh, I'm going to pause, and then I'll get the inside liners ready to go. All right, everybody. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inside liners that I did on the cover, where I'm going to double mat, and we're going to do uh, the same size. So the brown is 8 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths, and then the cream is 8 and a quarter by 8 and a quarter. So let's set this aside. Let's get these done. Somehow I, oh, here it is. I was going to say I lost the lid to my glue, but I just found it. And you may get a little bit of, depending on how thick your cream cardstock is, um, you may get a little bit of um, <clears throat> warping, but we're going to cover it, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> the other thing is if you are concerned about it, you can use tape. to the book. It's too high up. I'm going to adjust it. I'm actually going to turn it sideways so I can see top to bottom better. Very nice. I'm putting a little extra glue in the middle because this is not all on the same plane and I want to make sure I get good adhesion uh, to the center of the page.
Okay. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Now I've got a couple of things. I've got this, and I think it's really pretty, and then this is driving me crazy. It's so pretty. Um, so I'm thinking this is actually a little bit too narrow for me. As you can see, it's got a much bigger border than, than I would like. So I think I'm going to have to let this one go. And then if that's the case, um, I need to look at some other options. So give me a minute. Okay. I made my choice. This is from the 12 by 12 and I love this pattern. And I didn't use much of it on the inside, so I really like it here. And then I've cut this strip um, from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And this is the one that had that big, beautiful red door over on the right-hand side. But this is on the pattern that was to the left of it. So I've got these two strips. So I think everything's trimmed. I still need to ink. And then I may need to fine-tune this, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll get the big pieces in real quick and, and then see if anything uh, needs to be adjusted. Yes, we're making good time. And then after that, the last thing is to um, install the pages. And then I decided for the pocket pages, my inserts are going to be made out of the brown card stock. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet, except that I know that the um, inserts are going to be from the brown cardstock, partly because the brown cardstock is a very heavy weight, and it just makes it easier to take it in and out of the pocket. But also, I just really am loving the brown against the cream. It's just so lovely. So I don't usually do a contrast color for my inserts. It's usually the same as the cover of the album. But since I'm doing a double mat on the inside and outside, it's still very consistent and creates that sort of unity throughout the book. After this, I'm not sure what my next album is. We Originally, I was going to do Come One, Come All, um, but I'll have to check in with Julie and see what she wants me to work on next. That doesn't feel much like a, um, a holiday theme, and it feels more like a spring theme, but I don't know. I don't even know if they still have circuses. They don't here. I don't know about anywhere else. Okay. All right, and you know what? I think I cut these too small. Oh, that's disappointing. I'm going to have to find another contrast that works. They are a little too small. I didn't want that much of a border here. Hmm. I have to think about that a little bit. Hmm. Something I could do to mask it is to put a brown strip in between, like so, which would um, not have so much of the stark cream color popping out. I don't know. I'm disappointed. I probably this needed to be two and one eighth and it was and I did it at two inches. So I'm going to go find something else that'll work here. I don't think I'm going to add the brown card stock um, but it is a thought. So I'm going to find something to trim out at two and one eighth and that should do it for the inside liners. So then we're going to install the pages. Okay I found um some strips left over from the 12 by 12 that I'm gonna use. Um, I wish I hadn't cut the other one too short because I like the contrast better, but this'll do. And this is the um, back side of the cut aparts. I'm going to dry fit these real quick and see which one fits better which way, and then we'll get them glued down. That's good. And that's also good. I've got a little pencil mark here that I'm going to get rid of. I can't find my kneaded eraser, which I love. It's lost somewhere in the mess that I call my desk.
Yay, we're almost done. I love color blocking. It's one of my favorite things. That is a design technique that I, or aesthetic that I learned from uh, Leah, and I can't say her last name. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of, I think it's Memories by Leah, the name of her channel. Um, if you like color blocking, uh, she just does exquisite work. She sells her tutorials on Etsy but she has all of her walkthroughs online and you can definitely tell that she is my biggest influence. I really love her design style. Um, I also like um, Nostalgic. Nostalgic. Um, she does some really good stuff. She sells, She's uh, both of them are uh, Graphic 45 Ambassadors and um, she sells her tutorials on Etsy as well. And she does just really beautiful layering. Um, of photo mats and um, just sort of collage oriented. I really like her style. I've tried to replicate it a couple of times and it this is so much more my style. I have a hard time doing it, although I can appreciate it. So there we go. We're ready to put our pages in. And again, those are two of my favorite designers. In case you guys are getting tired of what I'm putting out, there's, there's, um, there's some really good designers out there. Um, not too many that offer free tutorials, but there are some. Okay, so I'm just going to con confirm my page order. So there's page one, page two. I think this is my my favorite spread. Um, and four, five, six, seven, and page eight. Okay, there we go. We are in the right order. I'm going to take my insert out as I try to apply it to the hinge. Just one less thing to fight with. Hmm. <laughs> It's, there we go. It's just flopping open because I'm arcing the, the page. Okay, I like to slip my page over the hinge and then reach in with my um, hook tool, or I call it my pick tool often, and pull the backing of the um, tape off. That's my preferred method. And I also like to keep my hinge and my page really tight so the pages don't go up and down and don't line up uh, nice and flush when you're installing. But it does mean that it's a little bit fussier to get it on the um, pocket page. There we go. Just a little help with that wonderful tool that I can't do without. There's only a few and that's one of them. Yeah. This and the tape tear tool, without these, I would be fumbling around endlessly trying to get tape torn or um, removed, the covers removed. Now, when I um, when I add my tape to the hinge, I always want to put it as all the way to the edge of the hinge so that there's a nice gap at the score line and the start of the tape because the page does not go all the way down on the hinge. A little bit of um, this hinge is going to be exposed. If, it, if you put your page down all the way to the score line, it won't lay flat when you go to open your book. Um, it'll want to stand straight up. So I don't remove my tape until I lay my page down because I want it to find that resting spot. Then before I pull the rest of the tape off, I want to make sure that it's laying nice with a even border top to bottom, that it's not um, drifting up or down. And I pull my tape out kind of like a zipper. The very end I just tug on it, press it into place, and I'm gonna raise it up and show you what I mean by that little bit of gap. So right here is the score line and right here is the edge of the page. So there's that little gap and that's why there's a gap between the score and the tape. Okay, and you can see how flat it's laying. Okay, now once I've got that in, then I flip it the other way and take out, let it find its resting space, and then take out the backing over here. And the second one is always easier than the first because I'm not fighting to hold the page uh, in place. 
I'm only taking the backing off. There we go. I'm going to push that into place. Make sure it's flush. Hopefully I'm not off screen. It's flush with the page that I've already laid down. I'm going to reach in and take off my tape. Okay, last chance to make sure it's in the right spot before I press it into place. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Lined up nicely. Next page. This is my blue center. <laughs> It's so different than the other colors I wanted to put it in the middle. Otherwise, I, I think the book would feel a little out of balance. I'm going to make sure um, my last hinge is laying down when I go to find my resting spot. Sort of checking it both ways. And it looks really good. Okay. my hinge down because it doesn't look straight. I think I grabbed a little too soon. Okay. Yeah. Looks like I need to come back and put a little bit of glue there. And our last page. And all of that, before I double check that I'm putting it in the right orientation, which I am, but that was stupid. I should have checked that first. I'm going to take that insect out. I have done this where I've put every single page in upside down because there was no direction on the inside liner. Up, up and down didn't really make a difference. And this is one that you could easily do that on. Okay. have a little bit of glue on my hands. It's uh, good to have a brush handy. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to add a couple of little pieces of embellishment, but I think I'm going to do that offline um, and cover that in the walkthrough. I'm going back and forth on the thoughts. These are really pretty, and I mentioned in a previous video that um, it had a very large white border, which I didn't like, so I fussy cut it closer to the pattern itself, which I think makes it a little bit more usable. And I've got uh, several of these, so I'm going to go back and try to work them in uh, various spots. I think I want this, like that, and then I had one more insert in the last page. 
And then I'm gonna give you the measurements really quick for the inserts. I'm gonna cover these offline with whatever uh, papers I have left over, but I'm gonna tell you the measurements. I'm making it a little bit smaller because it's a little bit thicker. So this is eight inches across by seven and three quarters. So seven and three quarters tall by eight inches. And the reason I want it eight inches deep is I do want a half inch to stick out to make it easy to pull it in and out of the pocket. So it's a quarter inch, a quarter inch shorter than the pocket page itself. That's a tight pocket, wow. And then we'll have this little bit sticking out, this half inch sticking out, which makes it easy to grab the inserts. So I do plan to cover them uh, with my remaining scraps and I'll let you guys know how far I get. But that's it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and call that done for um, the inside outside liners and page install. Thanks everyone.